<laughs> Hallelujah. Who did I see? I got it. I see it. Oro Roman and I see it. Praise God. Hallelujah. So uh, we're going to dive into some Bible study here tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. First, we come to you, God, in the name of Jesus, with all thankfulness in our heart, forgiveness, asking forgiveness of any wrongs, any sins, anything that came out of my mouth or heart or mind today that's not of you, any attitudes, any anger, any fear, any doubt, I just renounce it and repent it. It is a repentant heart, I repent it to you in the mighty name of Jesus, and we just thank you for all you're doing. We get all the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus name, amen. So hallelujah. <clears throat> We're going to get into this Bible study here tonight on reconciliation, relationship, and realization. Amen. So tonight we have a small study. Amen. On those three topics which I believe is one is one thing so let's see I believe it's a realization um, of who we are what are we doing here on this planet earth and um, you know where we're at in the story of life and where God ha has us at with his grace and mercy, his gracefulness, his patience to not um, destroy us again or flood the earth. He's a um, very merciful God. So I believe um, we must realize that, you know, the lost souls don't know Jesus. They don't know God. They don't know where we're at. You know, I know I didn't, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't know where we're at in the story of life. I didn't know what existence was, why I can see my arm in front of me or, you know, anything like that. So I wanted to know what we're doing here on the earth. What is life? You know, the physical body. What is existence? Um, everything that you see, the trees, the earth, the sky, moon, the stars, the sun, you know, what is this life? What are we doing here? So, I believe it's a realization of who you are, not just to call people to be Christians, but to help them to realize you were created by God, and that's a, that's a big thing, that's a big deal. It's not just about, you know, hey, come convert to Christianity, um, say a small prayer, and become a Christian now. And one of my favorite pastors at my church, Pastor Fred Young, I give a shout out to him with all due respect and love. I would say, you know, um, he's been preaching lately just fire from heaven. And uh, one of the things he said is, you know, evangelists and, and I got convicted or just Christians in general. We want to see these big events, this big revival of million souls just get saved in one night and hallelujah, God gets the glory and he pours out he you know his glory pours out to the world to the streets and to the human beings and we all celebrate woo and then it and then and then they fall away <clears throat> so we have to realize who we are yes and um help them help them to see it's not just about converting to Christianity or these big moves of God and now I'm a Christian and amen and even if the spirit of God pours out you know and they do realize who they are they have to walk that out through a relationship and then that comes um, there comes the reconciliation to God through that relationship and that's a process of just falling in love with Jesus over time not just one spiritual move or spiritual outreach or evening where God showed up you know so it's realizing hey this is who i am 
So this is who God created to me to be, to act, walk, talk like, behave like, and um, be forgiving like he forgave, be merciful and loving, be kind. You know, if I do get arrogant or angry or frustrated to repent, you know, be, you know, quick to listen, slow to speak, you know, slow to anger. That's the one I want to say, slow to anger. So we must operate in the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, and peace. Um, and that's part of the realization process, realizing who you are. And who God created you to be and who we were originally supposed to be before the fall before Adam and Eve um, disobeyed God we were you know supposed to always be communing with God with all love joy and peace there was no anger or dissension division or any lack thereof of God's presence in us and his character so now that we help people to realize through God's spirit, who they are, we have to walk that out with them. And that's a big salute, shout out to my, my uh, to Pastor Fred, my pastor. Amen. God bless you, brother, wherever you are tonight with, uh, with your lovely wife or your fur baby, wherever you're at. <clears throat> so, um, hallelujah. I would like to read the first scripture, John 3.16. This um, reads, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So that's realizing who you are, you know, that, that he loved us so much that he sent his only son that we may be reconciled and redeemed through what his son did on the cross. Coming down here as God in the flesh, as a man, tempted in all ways that we were tempted to be prideful, arrogant, angry, lustful, um, just all the things that we have to go through on this planet Earth. So, um, and he he was con he conquered he conquered that, and went to the cross to be our sacrificial lamb that we may be reconciled back to God. So once we realize that, you know, that's where the shift comes. That's where the shift comes. So um, shift in perspective. A shift in um, the way we live our lives and for me I'll share a little bit about my testimony you know I was walking just depressed it's not necessarily about these toppings we put on the cake you know oh you did this and that and your testimony is so wild whoa like it's really not that wild it was just a confused lost broken person in darkness and depression and not knowing who I was or created to be not knowing what life was just experiencing life, you know, um, as it was presented to me. So, and then I realized I, I, it's written on every human being's heart to want to know what what we're doing here. There's more. We just we just feel it. So I knew there was something more than just you know, living life lost. You know, even if you didn't grow up like me and end up on drugs or abandonment issues, depressed, whatever it may be, you know you still have a longing to realize to want to know you know what we're doing here what is life what is existence you know even if you did great had a great home didn't have a broken home you went to college you know you still have those questions in your heart and mind you know what is life how did everything come to be so i wanted to know and i found out you know through a personal experience with god with jesus that you know he's really real and um, it's not religion. It's just that he, he, he showed up to me through the Holy Spirit. And he chose a specific time to do that, that um, I would believe. So we all um, should long for that encounter with God and desire that. That is a healthy desire. And desire to see other people have that encounter. And then also walk out that um, realization through relationship. And then that's how we are reconciled. Amen. <clears throat> so let's go into the second scripture. Second Corinthians 5:21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's let's read that one one more time. Let it sink in, <laughs> at least for me. Second Corinthians 5:21. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Hmm. 
Amen. So that's about reconciliation right there. Realizing, you know, another thing that makes you realize where we're at in the story of life. We're sinners. We're in a fallen state. And Jesus was sent to be sin for us. So um, that is an amazing thing. That is an amazing thing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And um, I'm just going to go down certain scriptures that I wrote wrote down through Bible study for tonight for this short little video um, just to show us you know it's about realizing who we are in him and what we're doing here on this planet earth you know we should long to want to know what we're doing here what's our calling our purpose what's our function what we're meant to do who we're meant to be how we're meant to be and that only be comes from a relationship with God himself the creator through Jesus Christ and through that relationship and that realization of who we are, we get reconciled back to him through what Jesus did. And then we can walk that out and become like God with his character resting in us and through us. And we can be Christ-like. We can be like God. We can know him through what Jesus did. So I believe it's all three in one. Realization and relationship brings more realization and re reconcil reconciliation. So those are the three R's that I have. Relationship, realization, reconciliation. And sometimes they kind of go, you know, weaving together, you know, however you want to look at it. When the, um, <clears throat> those people on the street say they put the little bean or whatever under the cup and it mingles around or, you know, you juggle it. Uh, the clowns that juggle the oranges or whatever. So those three things right there. Realization of where we're at in the story of life. Relationship with God through Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And um, reconciliation through what Jesus did on the cross uh, back to God. And then, I guess, a relationship. Then a relationship with Jesus. But those three, it could, you know, they can be put different ways. And as you walk with God, you continue to realize who you are and what you're doing here through that relationship. And you get reconciled through that as well. So it's like, it's not confusing. It's just three very powerful words that play out um, as you start to seek God. You know, he knocks at the door of our heart, but it's on us to let him into our lives. And um, then a beautiful relationship happens and more reconciliation. But um, we all have a desire to want to know what, what is life. And if you don't, you should. Because <laughs> um, it's very important to know what you're doing here on this planet Earth. Because your eternity is at stake in that. So let's continue. Um, <clears throat> Genesis 1.27. That's the next scripture here. <laughs> so God created mankind in his own image In the image of God he created them Male and female he created them Amen So there it goes there right there in the Bible It shows us that God created us in his image So we were meant to be just like God You know If you're a man, if you're a woman You're created in God's image So that's another realization Scripture of who you are and who you were created to be who he created you to be and me to be amen hallelujah so let's see let's go to genesis 2 7 then the lord god formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils <laughs> the breath of life and the man became a living being hallelujah so you know he formed us literally from his creation already he created the world and he formed us from the earth you know man and woman and, and breathed his spirit into our lungs that we may have life so the bible says there it is there you know we realize wow god created me out of you know the ground pretty much not nothing but out of out of the dirt out of the dust of the ground and breathe his spirit into me and to you sister and brother you know that we may be living beings you know and have a wonderful life that he created for us so that's a beautiful thing to realize that wow you created me god thank you father god for creating me wow now i know whoa wait a minute it wasn't just some random act god created me from the dust of the earth so that i could have life and, and enjoy his creation and commune with him 
but he was a lonely God. He didn't want to just be here in existence by himself, you know, so he, he created. He's a creator, very creative. So that, that shows why we're creative, you know, as human beings on the earth, why we create different things. Because we're made in his image to create and realize how things work and understand this or come up with concepts and, you know, he gave us his mind, you know, he gave us his, his sight, his ears, his nose. We're created in his image to be like him, to continue to create. So that's a beautiful thing. When you realize that, you uh, have a shift of focus and you give all the glory to God. So amen to that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's keep moving on. So here we go. Relationship. Relationship. Revelation 3.20 reads, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Amen. So he 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 constantly is knocking at the door of our hearts. Whether, you know, um, I believe whether we're saved or not, but especially those that are not saved, you know, he's, uh, if you're already saved, he's going to continue knocking. He wants to fully, for you fully surrender. He wants to fully be in your heart, you know, but definitely if you don't know him throughout your life, he'll give you instances or different moments where he's just, He's a gentle God. He'll knock at your heart. And I've had family members I know that say, man, I heard God voice. You know, I heard this, I heard that. And they might be stubborn or turn away. So he, he's always trying to get our attention. He's always trying to knock at the door of our heart. But it's on us to let him in. You know, he's not a forceful God. He's a loving God. You know, he wants a willful, you know, he wants a relationship with us that we want through what we want as well. He wants us to want. He's not going to force us. He gave us free will. You know, when you um, fall in love with someone or choose to love someone, you know, you, you choose. It's a choice. You know, you say, I choose to love you and let you into my heart, you know. Um, so I believe he wants us to want him too and to love him too. He's not going to force us to love him, you know, but he's also going to always gently knock, hey, you know, I'm here. Would you let me into your heart? Let me into your life, your mind. I want to enjoy you. You know, I want to spend time with you. I want to hear what you want to do. I want to do what you want to do. Let's do it together. So I believe that's how God is, you know. Uh, he's a loving God, a gentle God, a peaceful God, a kind God. And he wants to spend time with you, but he wants to be wanted too. So through a relationship um, with um, through his son and what his son did, to reconcile us back to him on the cross. Amen. So, um, let's see. After he knocks at the door of our heart, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's read 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, I believe. Well, we enter his course with thanksgiving and praise, but he is a holy, righteous, pure God. So I, I believe we must cleanse ourselves first through the blood of Jesus and receive what his son did on the cross. Receive the blood of Jesus Christ. And then we can enter into God's presence by confessing our sins and receiving Jesus Christ. Then he'll hear from us and commune with us. And that's what he desires to do. But we can't just come to him in the state we are. We're not going to be able to hear from him or, you know, feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. So I believe if we confess our sins, you know, he'll just he's just and faithful to forgive us. And that will give us access to God, you know, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And he will cleanse us because he, he's clean. He's holy, pure, righteous, undefiled. There is no sin in God. So. If we want to be in God in a relationship with him, be in his presence, we have to come correct. We have to be clean, pure, righteous, and holy. He'll still love you from a distance, but I believe he desires for you to come close to him as you are, but also to say, hey, I let you in, you know, into my house, you know, to come hang out with me if you, if you, if you're right, if you're righteous and you're righteous, being, you're made righteous through my son and what he did. So if I came to your house and I had a bunch of guns and drugs and 
a bad attitude and I stank. I didn't showered in months and you know, I had warrant for my arrest and I had all this stuff going on. You go, I don't want you over here. You go get up out of my house. I don't want you over, no, get up out of here. So I don't think God, you know, would want us in his house, you know. So it's the same thing. You say, go take a shower. You know, go take a shower, clear your warrants, get rid of the guns, the drugs, you know, all the stuff you got going on, and then come back and you can hang out, you know, cleanse yourself, renew your mind. So I believe through Jesus Christ, we're cleansed, and then we can enter into God's presence, you know, through his son. You know, we're forgiven, case closed, you don't stink no more, he cleans you from the inside out, he gets rid of your selfish ways, your crazy nonsense, your behavior, your... You're, you're, you know, I use that example, crazy examples, but, you know, those are metaphors, guns, drugs, whatever it may be. You maybe not have lived a crazy lifestyle like that, but it could be, you know, anything you, you were caught up in. But God wants you to be cleansed first by Jesus to come into his presence and build that personal relationship with God. And um, he's a good, good father, but he longs for us to be righteous and holy and pure just like his son just like him so we can all have a family of holiness righteousness and purity and that's a beautiful thing if we surrender to god and jesus and his will for us man we get so much he's healed my heart cleansed my heart continuing to renew my mind continuing to heal my character build my character mature me and we shouldn't go stubborn and pride and go oh i don't want that those should be good things that we say yes to god yes keep going keep doing the great work keep thanking him for everything he's doing you know i don't want to have a poopy head attitude or a immature character or wishy-washy or anything like that you know so i want to you know even if i may take a step backward or i slip i want to keep moving forward moving forward moving forward the best i can you know and letting him show me hey this is how we deal with this or this area needs help here with that so that happens through relationship you get reconciled in all the areas of your life through a relationship with the son and brought back to the father god how we were originally supposed to be in communication with god so um that's a beautiful thing that's a beautiful thing the process you know and it's not just you know a life process it's a relationship not oh i'm going through process i've heard brothers and sisters say that in the church and so have i i'm in process i'm in process are we in process or are we in relationship we're not you know a piece of meat you know processed meat i'm not in a you know we shouldn't be in a process i'm in a relationship with jesus christ i'm not here to correct anyone it's nothing against saying i'm in process but you know we should be in a relationship and that's a continual process that's you know continue ongoing thing for the rest of our lives and all of eternity i'm in a relationship and through that relationship i'm being made holy righteous and pure as god intended me to be reconciled back to him healing me sanctifying my emotions you know showing me areas of my life in my garden where there's you know unturned stones there's worms there are certain parts of my heart and mind where it goes ooh, that still stinks right here you know you ever met somebody, oh, they look good, you know, they smell good, but then you might go, oh, under the armpit, it's kind of, it's kind of funky still in that area, so <laughs> you might say, we need to still, we need to scrub this area out, this part is still stained here, you know, and uh, I'll say, when I had cancer, you know, they had to go back after chemotherapy and get certain tumors that weren't going away they had to pinpoint it with radiation and get those tumors out of there so he will pinpoint areas of your character your heart your mind your your walk with him or how you treat others or what you're doing in your life that's not of him that he says can i have that can i remove that can i scrub that last little area out that's still dirty you know where you're still slandering or you still have an attitude or you're still holding a grudge or resentment or being prideful, you know, we're, we're going to work on this. And sometimes that takes a while. I don't know if you guys ever worked on um, a house or clothing or anything or cleaned your kitchen and there's just that area, maybe a garage that had stuff in it for 20, 30 years and you just had to scrub. There was just grease and dirt and you had to scrub this one area just 
and it wouldn't come out. You had to go back again, back again. Some of us have been living a certain way for so long. There might be certain areas that knot's not going to come out so easily. You know, people think, oh, Jesus, boom. Now everything's just, you know, perfectly like Jesus healed and walked with him. Just why is his brother or sister not perfect already? You know, and, and that's just not reality. So certain areas you have to say, God, you're going to have to undo this knot and it's going to take time. Or you're going to have to scrub this area with extra blood of Jesus, extra bleach, extra <laughs> water, pour water, rinse it, then go back, put more soap, scrub it some more, you know, scrub it again. And, um, hallelujah, glory to God. I believe it, it'll come out over time. Um, those areas in our heart and mind that are still not reconciled back to God, but through that relationship, they're being redeemed. Amen. So, um, here, we'll go with the third scripture John 15 5 I am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing amen so in him we can do nothing and the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, self-control, you know, uh, forgive me if I'm missing some, but the point I'm making is um, through that relationship, you know, in him, we will bear much fruit, which is just the, just the overflow of what he's doing in us, in our heart and mind through having a relationship with him. So his character in us overflowing, that's the fruit. If we're staying plugged into him, connected to him, the branch and the vine, the vine and the branches. So that's a good scripture that the Lord gave me for a relationship is just staying in connection and commune with God, with Jesus all the time. So if, if you ever turn something on a laptop or something or anything, you go, man, what's wrong with this? And you're trying to figure out why it's not working. What's going on? Why is there no power? Why is... The screen's not turning on. There's no, man, what's going on? And you look, oh, it, it wasn't plugged in. <laughs> it wasn't plugged in. That's all it was. It wasn't plugged in. So, you know, it may be a, just a simple problem. We think something's broken, you know, needs to be fixed. Just needs to be plugged in, you know. And then it'll turn on. Then the light will work. Then the buttons will work. Then you hear the sound. So... If you're plugged into God and him into you, that's where the power comes. That's where his anointing comes, his peace comes, his patience, his character, you know, the fruits of the spirit that come from him will flow through you when you're plugged into God fully and his life is flowing through you. So that comes through a relationship and spending time with him and surrendering all, you know, you're, you're let go, you're aligned. You say, I let go, I surrender. And now I'm plugged in. Like those two prongs that plug in, you go, I'm surrendered. So I'm plugged in. Here we go. But if those prongs are kind of tight and go, mm, 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 I don't want to surrender. I don't, it ain't going to plug into the wall correctly because they're bent. And you go, ah, 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 I don't want to plug into you, God. But if you go like this, you know, hallelujah. I'm just going to surrender all for, let you do your thing. Okay, now he says, cool. Now you can be fully plugged into me and I can flow through you. Because you align to me. And you let go. Just let, hold on, just let go. Let go. Let me, let me plug into you and you into me. Align with what I'm doing, my son. Don't be stubborn and hard-hearted and hard-minded. And you turn those prongs.